What is up everyone, Brad here from Astute Overwatch to guide you through the top 10 plays in week 5 of the Overwatch League. And now prepare yourselves because if you didn't tune into the games live this week, even if you did tune in, just get ready to rewatch it because some of these plays are absolutely mind-boggling. Every team really stepped it up this week because obviously the stage 1 playoffs were looming and so many of the teams near the top were vying for that third spot in the playoffs. Level of competition was the highest we've seen to date and some of the matches were truly enthralling from start to finish. With that being said, let's just get right into things with number 10. Coming in at number 10, we have something unique, something that we really haven't seen all too much of in the league at all, let alone with Zen ultimates, and that's body blocking. As you can see here, Jonak has the game sense to rapidly motion towards one of the three exits for Florida, blocking them from their supports and allowing other New York Excel players to filter in and put an end to the team fight. The fact that he had that game sense to position himself in the doorway, he knew exactly where his teammates were, he knew exactly where the enemies were, and he knew that by doing that, he'd probably done that a million times in scrims before, but this is the first time we'd really seen that on stage. He positioned himself in the doorway knowing that there was only two other exits for his teammates to be covering, and that way he could go around to this left exit here, pick off the Zen, whilst his teammates go around to the bridge entranceway and then obviously the doorway after he leaves it. And then suddenly the offense from Florida Mayhem is entirely shut down. They don't know how to figure this out, they don't know how to counter this play. And so that's it, that's just the end of the push, an incredibly intelligent play from Jonak. Coming in at number 9, we have Agilities playing with Junkrat on the side of the LA Valiant, essentially just wiping the floor with the Shanghai Dragons. And now you might just say, it's Junkrat doing Junkrat things, he's just spamming grenades all over the place. But you see at the end of this play, Agilities has this incredible ability to time his shots with the Concussive Mine to get an instant pick, his accuracy is on point, and this play is just... Sure, the LA Valiant were there and they were doing other things, they were distracting the Shanghai Dragons for the most part, but Agilities almost gets a team kill by himself. Just by, just by spamming grenades. He kills everyone on the Shanghai Dragons, it's insane. And I know it's kind of meme to look down on the Shanghai Dragons as though they're this incredibly poor team, but trust me, everyone in the league earned that spot, they deserve to be there. Sure, they haven't picked up their first series win yet, but they're still a great team, and that makes this play worthy of that number 9 spot. Coming in at number 8, we have Fleta on Farah against the LA Valiant in the first map of the series on Eichenwald. And we see him time these incredible flick shots against Silk Thread, predicting the movement, timing his shots, and then entering his barrage to just decimate the offense of LA Valiant. And sure, of course we've seen other flick shot plays make the top 10 list, but I think what makes this one special is the fact that Flutter was able to just completely deny Silk Thread for this entire first round. He picked him up, I think, four times in Fire Few Fire Battles, and this one was the flashiest of the bunch, so this is why I included this, but keep in mind the overall game sense here, the ability to completely shut down an offense from LA Valiant. It actually took LA Valiant until their final push in overtime against Soul Dynasty to break that first point. So a lot of that was on behalf of Fletter's incredible play on Farah, hence why it's in the number 8 spot. When making these lists, I really do make a conscious effort to diversify things as best as possible, because no one really wants to see 10 Genji Blades, 10 McCree Olds, it's kind of, it gets stale. So I do try to incorporate different plays from healers, from tanks, and then obviously the DPS are going to shine no matter what. But also I try to keep in mind the fact that there are 4 days of play, and in this case there's 4 days plus the playoffs, and I do try to diversify plays in terms of those days, I don't just want to have every single play be from one day. But that being said, the level of competition on day 4 was absolutely insane. So from here on out, every single play in this top 10 list is from day 4, from either the playoffs or the games before it. So do keep that in mind moving forward just to remind yourself of how insane that 4th day really was. So kicking things off from day 4, coming in at our 7th play of the week, we have Cool Matt on the side of the Houston Outlaws with his Zarya play. As you can see at the top of your screen, this was the tiebreaker map between Houston Outlaws and Boston Uprising. Now, if Boston Uprising were to have won this series 3-1, they would have advanced to that third spot in the playoffs. So this match here was to determine whether it would be the Houston Outlaws or LA Valiant, securing that third playoff spot. You have to assume that Boston Uprising were aware of the fact that Cool Matt had his Graviton Surge ready to go, but nevertheless, Kellex actually popped his Valkyrie just as Cool Matt used his Graviton, and he gets caught right in it, and he's actually the first to die. The Grav picks up a few more after that, but it's just the fact that Cool Matt was able to time this so precisely that he picks Kellex off as he has that potentially game-changing Valk. Incredible game sense from Cool Matt.
Coming in at number 6, we have Linkster on the McCree, who just completely stunts the Boston Uprising offense. It is absolutely insane what he manages to pull off in this play. We can clearly see Dreamcasper pop his Genji ultimate just as Linkster is able to shut him down. And then just look at this flick shot. What can you even say about this? How does he get that headshot on the striker? It was kind of inconsequential because the team fight had already been won by the Houston Outlaws, but the fact that he was able to flick this shot. It absolutely just doesn't make any sense. You should not be able to hit shots like that. No one should have that sense of timing. Speaking of ridiculous flick shots, coming in at number 5 we have Bird Ring on the McCree. And now I don't typically like to have back-to-back -back plays be from the same hero, but I'm going to make an exception to this rule because I do think that Bird Ring one up Slinks here in the most absurd way. First we see him get this wild headshot on Sabi Orbi. He misses the flash, but it doesn't even matter, he doesn't need it. And then he goes on to use his Deadeye, picks out the Pharmacy, and that's essentially a teamfight one for London Spitfire. Just superb mechanical ability coming out on the side of London Spitfire, and trust me, this is not the last time we will see them on this list. Coming in at number 4, we actually have London Spitfire appearing on Eichenwald again, but this is the first appearance of a play from the playoffs. We have Houston Outlaws vs London Spitfire fighting to face New York Excel in the Grand Finals. With that knowledge, you can clearly understand the stakes were high and every single play was absolutely crucial. So as overtime progressed, Houston Outlaws are at 96.9%, so close to capping that first point and having extra time in the bank to progress through the map. But before Houston could do anything, Prophet had something to say. He launches his Riptide from across the map, scales the tower in the middle, and manages to find Banny, the most important pick. Sure, Bunny didn't even have a Valkyrie up, so it wasn't that huge of a deal, but that being said, this is the very last team fight, and if London win this map, that's it, they eliminate Houston from stage 1. And you can tell as well that Houston had actually managed to kill the Mercy on the side of London Spitfire as well as pick off Gesture, so this team fight was in favour of Houston, until this tire came through and swung the team fight and managed to secure London their spot in the Grand Finals against New York XL. Coming in at number 3, we actually have the first play from the Grand Final series between New York and London. We just see Sabi Obi doing absolutely everything on Tracer. Staying alive, getting the crucial picks, getting this insane stick, and winning that team fight, and thus winning the map. One thing to consider about this play specifically, we see at the very beginning he actually uses his Pulse Bomb as the play is in overtime. This team fight has already commenced in overtime, it's been going for about 10-15 seconds at this point already. He uses his Pulse Bomb, and then throughout the entire play, towards the end he actually gets another Pulse Bomb and that's what secures the map win. He charges 100% of his Tracer ult, and sure you can argue yeah it doesn't take a terribly long amount of time, but still all in overtime without leaving the point, without giving up the point to London, he charges another Pulse Bomb and that's what is clutch, that's what gets this the third spot in our top 10 players of the week. Coming in at our second spot, we have none other than Pine himself, Big Boss Pine, coming out strong for New York Excelsior. Now from this angle, when it was happening live, you don't necessarily think that what Pine is doing is some next level play. You just think, okay, Pine has a good position, he's getting a couple of key picks, that's the team fight, awesome, done. But when you look at the replay and when you realize his position wasn't all that advantageous, he actually was in a pretty tough spot to get those picks, he just pulls off some insane flick shots as Pine always does and he gets those 4 kills, it's just the team fight is over, there's nothing London can do about that. It makes me curious as to what the communication is like on the side of New York. Do they just kind of let Pine be silent and do his own thing? Do they just not even communicate with him, they just know that he's going to do something insane if he's not talking? Or do they tell him, or does he tell them, okay guys I'm going for this flank, keep them distracted, I'll just do all the work. You have to assume that at this point, everyone else on New York is kind of just okay with Pine going off and doing his own thing. If he manages to pull off plays like this, not consistently, but I mean relatively consistently. He pulled something like this off in week 1 on McCree and now he's doing it in the match that matters most in the stage 1 playoffs. You really just can't ask for more out of a star DPS player like that. Coming in at our number one spot, just keep in mind that a lot of deliberation goes into these lists, so I really try and ensure that the absolute pinnacle of Overwatch is being represented here. So coming in at number one, it is none other than Dallas Fuel with the absolutely clutch res. There was no better resurrection from Mercy in all of stage one. They nerfed her specifically because of this play, it had nothing to do with what anyone was saying on Reddit, it was just because of this play. This play was so intense, so clutch, you really just saw Mercy shine, and that's why it's in our number one spot. 
of course we're only getting the actual number one play, it couldn't be anything else other than the $100,000 tire itself as coined by Doa. Sure this isn't the most technical play and this isn't the flashiest of picks, but it was the one that mattered most throughout all of stage one. This play specifically is what gave London the win. This is the last team fight on the very last map of the series. London needed this pick more than anything and they got the most crucial pick on Mercy. It really did solidify the win, this last team fight was already in overtime and now they have no reses on the side of New York. That's pretty much game set match, you can't ask for anything more from a rip tire than to get the most valuable kill in the game. For Prophet to have timed the tire as such and to have positioned it in a way that he could pick the Mercy off as she was on that flanking route, it's an incredible game sense, it, whether it was intentional or not. It was important, it was the pick that mattered and that's why it's the number one play of the week. Let me know in the comments below if you disagree, I'm sure there are plays that I missed that you would consider to be top 10 worthy, but just keep in mind there are so many plays to sift through, there could have easily been top 10 Genji Blades of the week, top 10 Pine plays of the week, there is just so much good content that it's incredibly difficult to solidify just 10. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video, tune in next week for the next top 10 plays.